Hi, I'm Doreen Virtue, and you may know of me from my books about angels and my oracle cards. What I was best known for in the New Age was called angel cards, and they were based on tarot. Tarot scared me. It had the devil on it, it had pentagrams, I didn't like any of those things. So I created a deck of cards that didn't have any kind of evil symbolism, but uh, still was used for divination. And after a while, I think I had about 25 different decks of cards for sale. And I would give workshops around the world and on videos where I'd be demonstrating the cards or teaching other people how to use them. You know, everyone has guardian angels. I'm speaking as a lifelong clairvoyant. I didn't think anything I was doing was wrong. I hadn't read the whole Bible. There's no one in the sky with a clipboard judging you. That's all dumbed down religion stuff that is not true. <laughs> I thought that Jesus approved of everything we did as long as we were happy and positive. That's what we were told. We were also told there was no such thing as sin. Because if you think about it, the biblical assessment of man, what the Bible says about us as men and women, is not naturally appealing. You know, if you want to appeal to people in the Chagrin Valley, you probably shouldn't tell them what the Bible says about them. And no such thing as hell or the devil, that the crucifixion was a metaphor and not literal. Because what the Bible says about us all is this. One, I'm sinful. Two, I'm guilty. Three, I'm responsible. And four, I'm lost. I was born and raised in a false church, Christian Science. We'd go to Unity sometimes, but it was basically Christian Science, and it teaches a completely false gospel. It teaches that Jesus is a created being, the first Christed person that we are to aspire to, and that God is basically a genie who will grant your wishes and give you health. What is your heart's desire? What do you wish? Listen to your heart. It always speaks the truth. My mother had always told my brother and I that we were Christians because of Christian science. And I went right into the New Age, basically was teaching Christian science in the New Age, and became the top-selling New Age author at the top-selling New Age publishing house. And I don't say that to brag, I say that to give glory to God because to be saved out of that deception is miraculous. See, these people are in search of a spirituality that is disconnected from biblical truth. You're one with me, you're one with Jesus, you're one with Mary, you're one with God, you're one with all the angels, you're one with the person sitting next to you right now in this theater. Jeremiah says the same thing, listen to this. An appalling and horrible thing has happened in the land. Whoa, what's that? The prophets prophesy falsely, the priests rule at their discretion, and my people love to have it so. It was January 2015 when I first had kind of this bubble of narcissism that I was in, where I thought that any thought I had must be from God. I had that popped. I, I was pierced by the truth on, um, in January 2015 when I was driving and listening to Christian Satellite Network and Alistair Begg came on with a sermon called Itching Ears about 2 Timothy 4 and he talks about in the end times that people will want their itching ears tickled by false teachers and he described what a false teacher did to give false hope. They will accumulate for themselves teachers who will accommodate their passions. This is what I want to be. Oh, well, we can help you with that. As opposed to, well, actually, this is what the Bible says. And as he talked, it was the first time I'd ever been convicted for being a false teacher. And it just completely shattered my belief that I was supposed to give hope to people, even if I didn't really believe it. I, I used to tell people, oh, everything's gonna be fine, the worst is behind you. And uh, I realized listening to Alistair that I was not helping people doing that. Don't speak to me smoothly. Speak to me straightforwardly. My life depends on it. My eternal destiny depends on it. 
I really consciously changed. I was still a New Age teacher. I was still spreading deception because I was deceived. But after hearing his talk, it pointed me to go to church, which ultimately pointed me to the Bible. And when I got to reading Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 12, that's when I saw a list of things that I was doing. Um, fortune telling, divination, mediumship, interpreting omens, and the passage says that God sees people who do those things as an abomination. Not the actions, but the people. I, I was blown away by reading this. Uh, I thought before then I was, I know it sounds ridiculous, but I thought that I was helping God in the New Age. A lot of false teachers think they're helping God because we seem to be comforting people, making them happy. Um, we seem to be bringing healing to them, but it's all demonic and we are blind to that truth. So when I read Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 12, that's when I finally realized that I was a absolute wretched sinner who'd been spreading lies, destructive lies that could send people to hell for 22 years in the New Age that I'd been teaching, and uh, it just broke me. And I just got on my knees and, and started crying. Probably did for about three days. I just kept saying to God, I didn't know, I didn't know, I'm so sorry. I had no idea that I was defying you. I had no idea that I was breaking your law, that I was sinning, and I just kept saying, I don't know what I'm doing, please, please, Lord Jesus, take over my life. And just praying that he wouldn't send me to hell or anyone to hell for my false teachings. And that's when I was saved. If you're being called out of the new age to follow Jesus, you may initially feel confused and frightened. Christianity is grounded upon repenting and having faith in the true Jesus of the Bible, as opposed to the ascended master, false Jesus of the New Age, who is a permissive universalist. Jesus, the real Jesus, was fully God and fully man during his earthly ministry. As the sinless Son of God, Jesus died for us as the perfect substitute sacrifice for the sins that we have all committed. Jesus said that if we love him, we will obey his commands, said this in John 14, 15. We are saved by our faith in Jesus, not by our good works. However, when we are saved, we want to obey God. Here are some guidelines to help you navigate the early days of leaving the New Age to follow Jesus. First, get on your knees unless it's physically or medically not viable, and sincerely confess your known and unknown sins to God. Apologize and pray for God to forgive you. Pray for the strength to leave behind your idols and sins, and pray for God to give you wisdom and the ability to trust and love him. Pray for Jesus to be your Lord and Savior and give your life to him. Now, there is no one-size-fits-all script for these prayers. It's best to pray from your heart sincerely. If you're like me, you will cry buckets of tears during the process. You might even doubt whether God could possibly forgive you. Rest assured that if you're sincere in giving your life to Jesus and believing in him, and you're sincere in your repentance, God will forgive you. However, there will probably be consequences for your sins. Number two, read the Bible daily. Pray for the Holy Spirit to illuminate scripture for you. You can download the free ESV Bible app if you don't own a physical Bible. It is best, though, to have your own physical Bible in one of these translations. New King James Version, ESV English Standard Version, or NASB, which are accurate formal translations. The NLT, New Living Translation, is also a respected dynamic, which means 
thought-for-thought translation, which is in a simpler, more modern language for those who are new to the Bible. Definitely avoid, though, the Passion, the Message, and New World Bible, which are not true Bible translations at all. Reading the Bible daily will help you to know, trust, and love God. One of the reasons why people are drawn to the New Age in the first place is because they don't know or trust God, and so they try to control, predict, and manipulate their own future. If your career currently involves New Age practices, keep reading the Bible and pray to learn how to lean upon God and trust Him through the process of unraveling from the New Age. Third, read solid Bible commentaries to help you to understand the Bible. I read EnduringWord.com and GodQuestions.org when I was first reading the Bible, as they're both very helpful free sites that I still read. I also was edified by reading David Gusick's commentary books. Currently, I read commentaries from R.C. Sproul during my morning personal Bible study. Other helpful commentary authors include Matthew Henry and Charles Spurgeon. Fourth, join or watch online Bible studies with respected teachers such as Joel Beek, Alistair Begg, Sinclair Ferguson, John MacArthur, Stephen Lawson, Costi Hinn, David Gusick, Michelle Leslie, Susan Heck, and Chris Quintana. Good resources on Facebook to help you trust the Bible include Daniel B. Wallace, Alyssa Childers, Wesley Huff, and Christ is the Cure. MichelleLeslie.com has a list of teachers to avoid, along with articles backing up the reasons why we should avoid these teachers. Fifth, find a solid local church. MichelleLeslie.com has a search engine to help you find a solid church near you. Six. Join online support groups, such as New Age to Christianity. There are several groups for this topic, and they all offer you guidance on godly living and ways to deal with issues related to leaving the New Age. Since most of us lose our friends when we leave the New Age, these groups can help with loneliness. If you're coming out of a false church, There are also Facebook support groups to help you with recovery and learning how to discern. I also highly recommend Marcia Montenegro's Christian Answers for the New Age website and Facebook page. 7. Throw away or burn your idols. Pray for the Holy Spirit to guide you in knowing what items to throw away or burn. These items represent your investment in New Age deception, and so you might be reluctant to throw them away if you've spent a lot of money on them. Please resist the urge to sell or donate these items, because you would then be passing along the sinful objects to others. Acts 19.19 in the Bible discusses a huge bonfire in which 50,000 silver coins worth of sorcery items were burned by new Christians. Keeping New Age items in your home can lead to increased spiritual warfare, and they could tempt you, so it's not worth it to keep them. The items to dispose of include any New Age, witchcraft, false religion, or occult book. Some people keep these books for reference, but it's not recommended for a new Christian. You also might be in a position 
where your spouse or roommate owns these items. In my case, my husband has some angel paintings and a Knights Templar statue in his office. He knows I don't like those items, but he says he's not worshiping them as idols and he's choosing to keep them. So I just stay out of his office. Similarly, my mother, who lives with us, has Christian science books and she hangs on to some of my old books because they mentioned her in a favorable way. She also knows I don't approve of Christian science or my old books, but she chooses to keep these items in our house. So I stay away from her bookshelf. In other words, get rid of your items and avoid the items if someone else in your home has them. Other New Age items to throw away or burn include crystals if they were used as idols, which means that you saw them as having special powers apart from God, wands, pendulums, oracle, divination, or tarot cards, Ouija boards, sacred geometry objects, or clothing, or jewelry, oil blends that promise magical solutions, such as abundance, images that would distract you from Jesus and the Bible, occult ceremonial objects, such as candle magic, and vision boards, also sage if you burned it like an idol. The New Age culturally appropriates items and practices from other religions and uses them as idols. So please also throw away or burn dream catchers, statues or paintings of idols, evil eyes, mandalas, yoga mats, mala beads, drums used in drumming circles, and any drugs, natural or not, used for vision quests or journeying. Please throw away or burn any of my old products, angel cards, new age books, etc. I am so sorry that I ever wrote those materials. My own mother still owns some, and I pray for the day when she will get rid of them. I pray for the day when other people will stop selling these materials. You know that I don't sell them, and I have asked others not to. Also delete all New Age apps from your phone and iPad, including New Age Music. Then go through your social media follow and friends list and unfollow or hide any New Age accounts. Please resist the urge to immediately announce that you've converted to Christianity. Wait a bit until you're more grounded in God's word so that you can deal with the inevitable pushback. And when you do talk with your friends about your Christian faith, avoid arguments. Instead, share the gospel within the conversation and while praying aloud with them. Nine, if you sense the presence of demons, know that this is unfortunately normal spiritual warfare for all Christians. The demons get angry and retaliate when people stop following them to follow Jesus instead. Please don't try to cast out demons yourself, even if you say, in Jesus' name. The demons will outsmart you. Instead, call upon your Lord and Savior Jesus and pray for him to cast out the demons. Study the armor of God in Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 18. Also, play audios of the Bible in your home so that you can sleep. The free ESV Bible app has an audio option that my husband and I use in our home. Pastor Jim Osmond's book, Truth or Territory, is an excellent biblically sound handbook 
for dealing with spiritual warfare. 10. Reach out for help as you go through issues related to your conversion to Christianity, such as persecution, being shunned, loneliness, etc. Reach out for help first by reading your Bible and praying for God's help. And secondly, by asking a mature Christian friend, your pastor or church elder for help. Leaving the New Age to follow Jesus isn't easy, but it's necessary. And the rewards that you will receive for following Jesus far exceed anything that you could have received in the New Age. 